لكن تحديت الظروف وخذتها وحدي صبورا مستعينا بالصلاة كم مرة عصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاك قلبي من أساء محرمت وكم كرهت مصابها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are living in very interesting times and the amount of followers, subscribers, views is unfortunately what sets the benchmark and standards for some, not for everyone. And the popular speakers, the liberal woke deviants have a major influence. And due to this influence, no matter what they spew, the colonized Muslims, the Western centric Muslim, the Eurocentric Muslim living in the West feel that they have to forego their principles and Islam has to conform to Western norms and standards, which is unfortunately a common trend, more so across the pond. Now, Nu'man Ali Khan is one of those liberal deviants who has spewed so much rubbish over the course of his career. And he's a very successful businessman, let's just say that. His Bayna Institute is racking up millions and millions of dollars, which is fine. Bay uh, or Tijara is legal and halal. But unfortunately, the Western Muslims are nothing but a laughing stock. With all due respect, sad reality is we can present so much evidence refuting his liberal deviant rhetoric, but he's fanboys and fangirls would jump and defend him at all costs. So, what's the point you may ask? What we intend is that any deviance, any misguidance that is spread publicly, the Ummah, as Imam Ghazali says, that the uh, Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi al Munkar is Qutub al Deen, it's the pillar, it's the axis of religion. But they want to steer Islam to follow the Western model as part of the wider Western centrism, which believes that the Western model has a superiority over the rest. But they want to steer Islam to this Western model because they have this colonized, liberalized understanding and they try to conform Islam to that which leaves the Muslims empty and this is the generation that they're going to be raising. But we have glad tidings as per the Prophet Sallallahu direction that there will always be a group that will be manifest upon the truth. لا يضرهم And he will not harm them. Who opposes them, etc. إلى آخر الحديث Let's listen to Norman Ali Khan spew his rubbish. Have a listen. I am not convinced that we have interpreted the common, the, the common interpretation of the hadith involving the evil eye is interpreted properly. Al-Ainu Haq, in my opinion, Allah Ta'ala Alam, Al-Ainu Haq is referring to jealousy, can have really bad consequences. But not that if I stare at someone with enough laser focus, they will fall down the stairs. Uh, or, you know, you, you developed, uh, I developed really bad allergies yesterday because the first day somebody didn't say, MashaAllah, when they saw, they saw my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, no, because if, if Ain was really that powerful, then every time... A country get, elects a president that the country doesn't like. Everybody should just get together for a Ayn party and just. And then they should just <laughs> start melting as they speak. <laughs> like, and though nobody gave, like nobody received more Ayn than the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Uh, the, the thing with the idea of, uh, you know, um, Oh, you you were you were you dressed up for a wedding and then you looked really nice, but you didn't say mashallah, or somebody else didn't say mashallah. Even worse. Okay, you said it. You're like, mashallah, tabarakallah, inshallah, Allah But when you got to the wedding, somebody in a corner was like, Oh, she looks nice. Some old lady. And she didn't say mashallah. And somebody else pulled her in the other direction. And now all of a sudden qadr has changed and now you know, you're just going to develop this skin rash that's going to make like 
boils on your forehead and you're like, that old lady, I got ein, I got ein at the wedding. No, that's, in my opinion, that is superstition. This is a, this is, this is a kind of religion that people before Islam followed superstitions and then they had to find ways of ending the curse, right? Then they had to go to someone who could end the curse for them. And the end, the curse was kind of a spiritual pharmacy where the guy will say, oh yes, I must contact the spirits and you have this demon on you, you have this evil eye on you, you have this you know, magic spell on you and I will give you this, you know, mix, drink this and then go around the circles three times and then do the hokey pokey and then it will go away, but it will charge you $50 or something. You know, this, this whole nonsense, this was the way that people used to buy religion, right? And Islam came, where, where in the Quran is this, this ayin? Where is it? And then people extrapolated from ayat like, that believer, the disbelievers, would they, they stare at you so hard that if they could, they would make you fall off your steps from the way they look at you when they hear the Quran. Meaning Allah is describing the hatred inside their eyes. You heard Nu'man Ali Khan, subhanAllah al-Azim. Did you sense a bit of mockery from him? There was a tad of mockery of the concept. And that's very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. But nevertheless... He went on a, a tangent about, you know, the, 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 the leaders have an iron party, the wedding, and he went on a bit of a tangent. So what I want to do, because this man supposedly reads 27th of Seed for one ayat, right? And in my opinion, now, who are you? <laughs> Some liberal woke that set up a multi-million dollar business and all of a sudden your opinion matters? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And again, I don't want to go back because if you really open this up, Really, you should not be sitting in front of women, mate, with all due respect. But that's a different story altogether. So let's go into... So as you can see in my hand, I've got Sahihu uh, Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Now this is basically taking out the, the weak riwayat from Sheikh Mustafa bin Al-Adawi from Egypt, Hafidullah wa ta'ala. So as you can see on screen, we've got Tafsir Ibn Kathir, but I've got the abridged version in my hand. So to summarize, it mentions uh, what Ibn Abbas and Mujahid mentioned. And other than them, that they want to make you slip and they, they have hatred for you and whatnot. And jealousy, so he's got that point there, jealousy, right? But this is where it's detrimental to Na'man Ali Khan. If you would read the tafsir, because this man's supposed to be an expert, right? Quran week and whatnot. Uh, I read 27th of Seed for one verse. Well, <laughs> he didn't read this one, right? So what did he mention? And that Allah protected you and whatnot. But where the arrows are, it says, وَفِي هَذِهِ الْآيَاتِ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْعَيْنَ إِصَابَتُهَا وَتَأْثِيرُهَا حَقٌّ Okay, so he mentions that in this verse is a dalil. They said they use the, the verse. What do you mean they use the verse? We're talking about the ulama, not this liberal deviant slave to the Western model. We're talking about the ulama. I could go into plenty more, but I'm just giving you one example. So he mentions there's a, a, a evidence in this verse that the ayn, whoever gets afflicted by it and affected by it, is true. Be all, with Allah's permission. And Ibn Kathir ends up by saying, كَمَا وَرَدَتْ بِذَلِكَ الْأَحَادِيثُ الْمَرْوِيَّ مِنْ طُرُقٍ مُتَعَدِّدَةٍ كَثِيرٍ He mentions that, as it's been mentioned in plenty of riwayats to three different paths. So you got Tafsir Ibn Kathir, but this is just Sahih by Mustafa Al-Adawi. So, Nurman Ali Khan, what you're missing, as per the understanding, of the classical ulama, I could bring Bagawi, Tabari, I could bring many. You're, you're supposed to be the one that reads 27 uh, tafasir for one verse. Bi amri Allahi azza wa jal. With Allah's permission. So someone can look at someone with an evil eye. But if it doesn't happen, bi amri Allahi azza wa jal, nothing will happen. Deviant was mocking the concept of the evil eye. Yes, now to add. Now this is where, because of his Western liberalism, he's a woke liberal deviant. He's negated the concept of the Ayn. According to me, it means jealousy. According to me, it means this. Who gives a damn what you think? Now, in the subcontinent, because he's a Pakistani background like myself, so I can, a certain percentage of me can relate to what he's saying. Because there is superstition amongst subcontinent Asians, Muslims, obviously, when it comes to the concept of Ayn and, 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 and Sihar and, and everything else. So, Yes, there's an exaggeration. So I'll give you an example. We believe in karamat of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, Junaid al-Baghdadi. We believe in the karamat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with. But like Ibn Kathir said, as you can see on screen, that 
when they narrated, meaning his followers narrated the karamat of Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani al Hambali al Athari, they said that there was akthuruha mughalatun. And I'm, I'm quoting from my head, I haven't got the, the PDF in front of me or the, the Bidawa Nihaya right in front of me at the moment. Because a lot of it was exaggerated. So come back to me now. So, yes, the concept of Ain is haqq. And the one that gets affected by it or afflicted by it, bi amrillah azza wa jal, it's true. We're going to present some ahadith as well. The same concept of the karamat, of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, they are true. But some are mughalat. Some are exaggerated. And yes, in the subcontinent, when it comes to ayin, everything's affected by ayin. Everything's affected by sihr. And they are exaggerations. So he's now potentially come across many of these exaggerations and then negated the whole concept of ayin. Okay, let's get into ahadith now. From the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Ibn Kathir mentions that there's ahadithul marwiyatu. Min turukin mutaaddidatin kathir. Okay, so as you can see on screen, we got Muwatta Imam Malik has a full dedicated chapter called Kitabul Ain. Ya Jahil. Here you go. So let's present the hadith. As you can see on screen, we've got hadith number 1794. So whoever wants to check it. And I'm just going to summarize it because there's different variations. And it mentions that uh, Sahil bin Hunayf. Uh, passed by Ammar bin Rabi, and he had a bath, and he and he praised him. He said, "I've never seen someone with such beautiful skin," and he collapsed. So, to summarize, he, he was presented to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, brought to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet said, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Alama yaktulu ahdukum akhahu." He says, "Why do you want you kill your brother?" Allah barakta, except that you should invoke Allah's blessings for him. Allah barakta. Then he, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, "In al ain al haq." That indeed the evil eye is true. But come back to me now. So, Nu'man Ali Khan, I think you should read chapter 50 of Imam Malik's Muwatta. All right? I think that you, you would leave this liberal woke bullcrap. I was about to say BS there, but I want to be very, very delicate. And also, we've got. I just bring my notes up. And also the same hadith is in Ibn Majah's collection. And Ibn Majah has various ahadith. So if you carry on, you've got 3,510. Hadith number 3,510, he mentions that Asma went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, inna bani Ja'far tusibuhumul ayn fa astarqi lahum. She went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, the children of uh, Ja'far bin Abi Talib has been afflicted with the evil eye. Shall I perform ruqya? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Naam. They got 3,512. And he mentions that Aisha radiallahu anha said, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa commanded her to recite ruqya to treat the evil eye. Man Ali Khan was mocking the idea of the evil eye. As I said, there are exaggerations, there are mughalat. I, I understand that. But his mockery, the ayn party and laser focus and, you know, the wedding. It's just mocking. It's just mocking. Bi amri lay azza wa jal. By the permission and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will happen. Even if you do that a thousand, alf marrat. If you do that a thousand marrat, everyone got together and they looked at a leader and did X, Y and Z. Nothing will happen. Unless bi amri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as you can see on screen, we've got the hadith of Abi Dharr al-Ghafari radiallahu anhu and in Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal inna al-ayna la tula'u bi rajuli bi idni Allahi ta'ala. Indeed the ayn, meaning the evil eye, that a person is afflicted with. This this tula'u uh, here is afflicted, like to see, to be afflicted. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ends off by saying hatta yas'ada haliqan even if he was to ascend a mountain called Haliqan, thumma uh, min, and then it will come down. So you see the hadith of Imam Ahmed's Musnad highlights the affliction of Ain bi idnillah or bi amrillah as Ibn Kuthirma bi idnillah as per this hadith by Imam Ahmed or narrated by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad. I'm just going to develop the skin rash that's going to make like boils on your forehead, and you're like that old lady. I got Ayn. I got Ayn at the wedding. No, that's, in my opinion, that is superstition. This is, a, this, is, this is a kind of religion that people before Islam followed superstitions, and then they had to find ways of ending the curse. Right? Then they had to go to someone who could end the curse for them. And the end the curse was kind of a spiritual pharmacy where the guy will say, oh yes, I must contact the spirits, and you have this demon on you, you have this evil eye on you, you have this you know, magic spell on you and I will give you this, you know, mix, drink this and then go around the circles three times and then do the hokey pokey and then it will go away, but it'll charge you $50 or something, you know. This this whole nonsense, this was the way that people used to buy religion, right? And Islam came, where, where in the Quran is this this ayin? Where is it? And then people extrapolated from ayat like, وَإِن كَادَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُوزْدِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرِ 
that believer, the disbelievers, would they, they stare at you so hard that if they could, they would make you fall off your sli- steps. From then no, Muhammad Ali Khan mentioned, where is Ayn in the Quran? Well, well, this is the same argument you use, where is Aqeedah in the Quran? Well, this guy, honestly, there's something, there's some screws loose. If we use his own argument and principle about where is Ayn specifically in the Quran, let me ask you, which I'm sure you believe in, where is Dajjal in the Quran? Where is Imam Mahdi in the Quran? Where? Major alamat, for example, I've got the book Nihayatul, uh, where is it gone? Ibn Kathir's book, somewhere here. Uh, no, no, I don't know where I put it now. But yeah, where is that in the Quran? Where is Imam Mahdi? Where is Dajjal in the Quran? I'm sure there's many examples, but it's not coming to mind. But many of the alamatul sa'a, if you look at the alamatul uh, qubra, leave the wusta and the uh, sughra. Where are they in the Quran? The whole mockery, the body language. The whole mockery, the tone, the body language. And this is just a sample. Uqsumu billahi al-alil azim. I got Sunan al-Tirmidhi here. We could have went into that. I've already presented Imam Malik. If you go to Kitab uh, al-Ain, chapter 50. Uh, he calls himself a early Hanafi. Please, give me a break. You end upon the, early, uh, upon the uh, understanding of the early Ahnaf. Like the students of Imam Abu Hanifa. Uh, Imam Muhammad bin Hassan al-Shaybani, Abu Yusuf, Imam Zafar, and, and the early uh, Ahnaf. You know, upon that, who do you think you are? Look, he likes the sign of his own voice. He's self-amazed with himself. Yes, I, got, I have to give him credit. He's Arabic, top-notch. But the problem is, just knowing the Luga alone doesn't mean a person has the correct understanding of the deen when they don't resort back to the correct understanding of the early uh, scholars, meaning the Salaf, and then thereafter... Uh, those who follow them in good. So, be careful who you take your religion from. There were many, many more examples that I could, I could have provided, but this is sufficient to point out that this man needs to stop. I believe, why is he coming out? And, and, and you know what I mean by that. Considering the, the layout of his, of, his, of his lectures, yeah, Rajul, behave yourself. Behave yourself. And I'm not even a student of knowledge. I'm a grade below a student of knowledge. And if I could access these sources and educate you and slap you in the face with these evidences from the ulama, I could have presented many more. But then the video gets lengthy and it's just adding on to the same topic. But you're an early Hanafi, aren't you? You're an early Hanafi, right? <laughs> Honestly, making the claims easy. Let's just say that. So take care of yourselves. Wa salam ala nabiyya Muhammad. ليس الغريب غريب الشام واليمن إن الغريب غريب الأحد والكفن إن الغريب له حق لغربته على المقيم في الأوطان والسكن سفر بعيد وزاد يبلغني وقوتي ضعفت والموت يطلبني ما أحلم الله عني حيث أمهلني وقد تماديت في ذنب ويسترني تمر ساعه 